<laughs> Thanks for no, I can't refuse. <laughs> we got your weekend beverage ready. Good job, good job. We know we can always count on you. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Irene will be popping in in a little bit. Um, and we've got a little bit of a um, couple of things to share with you. Um, but really, we wanted to um, make this a, a fun and interactive session um, where you guys can get your questions answered, where we can share some of our experiences with you. Um, so please do engage in the chat. Um, Bother us with questions. Uh, uh, Paul is the is the first of a couple of uh, international innovators who are going to be popping in. Um, I'm not sure how much time you have, Paul, but uh, yeah, going to be popping in and sharing experiences just so that you guys can get a bit of a feel for um, a feel for the community and uh, that hopefully we can help all of you um, incredibly innovative South African teachers uh, get your applications ready for when they open uh, for the next cohort that we can apply for and uh, that you can understand a little bit more about the Innovator program and what it looks like um, and all of that jazz. So thank you so, so much for uh, for being here. Uh, maybe while we wait for the last couple of peeps to, to join us, uh, if you want to pop into the chat, if you haven't already introduced yourself, please tell us uh, which school you're from and which part of South Africa or the world uh, you're joining us from, and then uh, perhaps we can uh, we can start off with what you think innovation is. So if you had to explain innovation, uh, you can pop into the chat and uh, let us know in your mind what is the definition, or if you had to kind of try and articulate what innovation is, uh, let us know in the chat. So pop in, introduce yourselves, um, come say hi, and um, let us know what you think innovation uh, is or what it means once you've introduced yourselves in the chat. Super. Um, Irene, you haven't met Paul, hey? Not in person, no. No. <laughs> but I have, I have, um, I think we were in, we're in the same groups, like. I think um, we are. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> In the same circle. Hey, Lucy, nice to see you here. Yeah, so Paul was part of the uh, the virtual innovator academy along with me. You you dressed the part. My uh, my hoodie was worn to gym this morning, so it's a bit sweaty. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that far. I wasn't planning that far ahead. <laughs> but uh, awesome to have you all the way from California. Uh, we got Joburg, loving reading what you guys think about uh, what innovation means. There's no right answer here, so don't uh, don't feel like it's too much thinking for a Friday afternoon. <laughs> it's just cool to start thinking about uh, about this idea of innovation that we're going to be chatting about and exploring this afternoon. Using resources optimally and effectively to do something in a new and exciting way. From Kerry, uh, Claire, changing the way it's always been done, right? Don't we know it? How much people love to cling to <laughs> that stuff that they know. Totally. Uh, Irene, do you want to take over the, the steering wheel here? Uh, oh, am I presenting? No, it's me, but you will be. Oh, I am actually. Never mind. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you are driving, Muriel. My bad. <laughs> We need to we need to find the mirror. We need to actually have a slide with that on because we're afraid <laughs> that, uh, that it'll clip so often. Awesome. Okay, so Lee is saying innovation is inspiring kiddies to make different uh, make di make a difference using technology and interactivity. Awesome. Cool. So uh, I think there's a couple of people more still uh, going to be joining us, but um, we are recording it. So we will definitely share with anyone who wanted to make the session and uh, and hasn't been able to. But uh, I think we've met most of you. But if you don't already know us, um, I am Lindsay, the 
Eddie Imagineer and Experience Architect at uh, Purple ZA. And with me this afternoon is... Irene um, <laughs> from St. John's College, but also um, the Chief Ideas Officer of Purple uh, ZA. So um, we're really excited to have you guys here. Thank you so much for, for being here and for taking the time. Like I said, hope you got a nice uh, weekend beverage and you um, comfortable and chill. You like the titles. We like them too, Paul. Uh, that's I know. <laughs> that's the cool part about that about uh, innovation and uh, and having your own jobs and your own projects is that you can make up your own uh, your own titles. So that's uh, <laughs> one of the things that we love about it. Um, but yeah, so today we wanted to just invite you to share, uh, well, we wanted to share a little bit of our journey um, with you. And I see we've got some more, uh, Joanna's joined us as well. So we've invited some of our international innovative <laughs> friends and, uh, and our local friends to come and join. Um, so we wanted to share a little bit about our journey and then uh, hear a little bit from you guys around the problems that you are uh, thinking about experiencing and checking out. Uh, Kerry's from a Microsoft school. Okay. That's why it's the first Google Meet. <laughs> but, uh, but you won't tell us, Kerry. But uh, we, know, we know that uh, you're an innovative thinker, so <laughs> we, you're most welcome here. Yeah? Um, and yeah, like give you, give you guys a little bit of time to share what you're thinking with us and uh, hopefully help you with your application, uh, give you a little bit of a sneak preview of the innovator experience, a um, couple of pointers for your application video um, and the application process in general. Um, but before we do that, Paul, can you just let me know how long you've got to uh, time-wise to kind of hang around? Because I don't want to uh, not give you a chance to share a bit and uh, chat a bit if you, if you need to duck out. Yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty flexible. I have probably like another, um, probably like an hour. Okay, awesome, cool. Well, then uh, feel free to chime in. Um, but there there is a specific uh, section dedicated to VIA twenty. Um, so I'm sure we'll we'll get to that before you have to go. So um, yeah, it's great to have you have you join us. So, um, we got really really excited putting this together for you, um, because. I think for Irene and I, the the Gen 18 Google Innovator Academy is an absolute kind of watershed landmark in uh, in both of our lives. And uh, yeah, it's just so great for, for us to have the chance to reflect and to share that with you. Um, and you guys know that we are exceptionally passionate about South African teachers, so you guys. Uh, the fact that we only have seven innovators in South Africa is not enough. We think we should definitely have uh, <laughs> have a whole lot more. But I don't know if you want to um, kick us off a little bit with uh, kind of where this whole story started, Irene. Uh, yeah, I think under a tree in, um, well, no, before that, Lindsay and I met each other at a, a Google summit of some sort in a bathroom. Um, and yeah, we've shared similar passions about teachers and teaching and and bringing joy to the whole teacher experience, connecting people to each other. And when the Google Innovator applications opened in uh, 2018, we were like, right, we want to do this. And I remember us sitting under a tree uh, sometime during the year and working on these applications and sending them in and really crossing fingers to see if we could both get into this academy um, uh, with, our, with our separate projects. So my project was a little bit about, it uh, was really about how do we... Should we show your video and then let them see what you sent to Google, or do you want to chat first? Uh, I'm going to preface a little bit. Uh, my <laughs> idea was to just how do we do for teachers what we do for kids? How do we provide differentiated, personalized learning, and how do we bring back that joy? So now you can go, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what went to Google. The days, the days in classrooms, classrooms with quiet, regimented tool control places are longer. long gone. However, However teacher, teacher professional development has not evolved to do reflect those changes. changes. I'm Irene, 
and in, and in our work with, with many teachers and schools, I've noticed that teachers are still maintaining those one-size-fits-all positions, which are often related to the subject or students. Yeah. Not yeah. Not yeah. It's such an echo. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, so, and we, yeah, we'd love to hear from you in a, in a little while, Melissa and Paul, uh, around your experiences. But uh, yeah, so three, almost three years later, <laughs> um, that was their team name in our in, in the Virtual Innovator Academy. Uh, so almost three years later, we have now um, kind of combined our efforts, and it may or may not have always been the plan. Don't tell Google. Um, we, we were like, we want to create this thing. Okay, let's make two separate applications, and then magically end up with a collaborative project. But that was kind of the plan all along. Um, but uh, we've created Purple ZA, which is um, a collection of um, gamified, personalized PD that really is designed to spark joy, that gives teachers choice in what, when, where, and how they learn, um, which you would have picked up from Irene's video, um, is, uh, I'm sure, a problem that many of you guys can resonate with. And then um, we've also got on the page the stories element where we're showcasing stories of innovation. Uh, actually, Claire and Lee, who are both uh, on the call, and Kerry's will be up by tomorrow. Um, <laughs> stories of innovation are showcased on the website um, where we really are um, connecting purpose and people and making sure that teacher education and uh, teacher PD is really um, meaningful and purposeful and sparks joy and that we connect people and build uh, the ZAG tribe that many of you guys have been part of and you've been on our Twitter chats and our hashtag and uh, and all of that. So this is uh, really for us uh, an incredible opportunity to be sharing our story um, as a kind of a purple ZA um, event because for us it's kind of a full circle of where it started and, and where um, where we are now, um, but this is not really about Purple ZA. This is also um, about you guys and around your your purpose. Yeah. So for us, you know our why. We want to bring joy to teachers. We want to connect teachers to each other. We want to empower teachers. We want to make education better. And you are here probably because you have a similar dream in education to change something, to make something better, something that you see is like really not working, that is a problem. Mm -hmm. So what is the thing that you might consider as a, um, as a problem for you? What is your why? Because innovators are this group of international educational influencers who use technology to solve problems. And um, you want to be part of this group of people who have fantastic ideas and fantastic connections and great ways to make that happen. So let's hear a little bit about what you might think you want to solve. And maybe while we do that, while everyone gets a chance to think, uh, perhaps Paul and Melissa, if you'd like to, um, Melissa can go first, you can do ladies first, um, come and tell us about your uh, your problem that you went to uh, to Google with. What was the problem that you guys really wanted to solve in your, uh, in your projects and in your applications? Okay, well, he hello everybody, I'm Melissa, like Lindsay has said, and I'm coming from Texas area houston area so i'm in that area and it's i don't know about y'all but it is hot texas has the hottest summers so it is so hot i'm staying inside <laughs> well anyway the problem that i had um i've been in education for about 16 years and most all of it's been an elementary educator and i always saw the the problem that i saw were that teachers were around me were just afraid to try like technology with with the littles and so you know yeah. i would be working on something and like it takes too much time. I'm not going to try that. I'm like, come on, you can try it. You know, they always saw that how excited my kids were because, you know, I'm going to be honest. I graduated in 1994. I had floppy disk. I didn't even have a pager. I don't know how I learned this technology stuff, but I just learned it. And like, I just pushed forward and I just pushed a lot of buttons to figure things out. And so that's how I always describe, just take chances and risk and just, just try it. It's not gonna hurt anything. And so um, that was my problem. How can we implement the use of digital tools with our little? So that was the problem that I took. Uh, to Google. So I thought about this and this was something, you know, that had been on my mind since, you know, I was a teacher. How can I help teachers 
see that it's okay and you know if they're because if they're scared of you know using technology you know their kids are going to be and one e teacher even confirmed that she's like i'm just scared and and how am i going to teach the kids i'm going to mess up they were f f afraid to fail is what it was so so that's what I've come up with. And, you know, since then, you know, I joined a, a company, a company, Fry Technology, and I've been able to push out my plan with uh, school districts. And we have start building like Google Academies for littles. Like I'm starting my my second and third co cohort this summer. And then we have additional plans to keep moving for with it. So it's just really turned into like this idea and problem that I saw as a teacher. And now I'm really, I've, given the opportunity um, to really help teachers by just pushing this out. And I've, I've, I feel like I'm living my dream and, and working through my passion. So it's been great. So I just took the chance. Like this girl did not have a pager. Like I had mm -hmm. an a, a answering machine. And, <laughs> and so. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. So I popped in the, in the chat the link to uh, Lee's story on our ZA80 Stories collection. Uh, she teaches grade noughts, so that, I think that's like, what are they, four or five, Lee? Uh, Five-year-olds, and she's using some amazing tech with them. And actually, tomorrow, we've got a six-hour Tech for Tinies um, online conference that, uh, oh, that we're running with South African teachers. So you've definitely got some people here who share... Uh, who share that passion with you. So thanks, that's awesome. Uh, and Paul, your uh, problem? Yeah, and thank you for allowing me to to join you. Um, I guess for you, it's it's in the afternoon, for me in the morning. Um, but I'm Paul Dietrich, I'm from uh, California. And um, my main uh, project or challenge that I was hoping to try and solve is actually it's, um, how can we not just create but sustain um, positive climates in schools so that basically all of your stakeholders, your students, your parents, your staff members actually ex experience a personal sense of belonging um, at school. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, how, do, how can we use, um, you know, te either technology or, or some, some sort of other method to really help people um, experience that. And I think kind of along the way, I, I think I've kind of diverged a little bit in, in that path, but overall the main idea is is the same, and so my my main project now, what it's kind of evolved or transformed into, is um, uh, it's still on school climate, but uh, I see online that there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, strategies that you can use or you can get to try and build climate at a school or build climate in the classroom. Um, uh, but the project that I'm working on is is actually trying to figure out how you can actually visualize um, either graphical representations of actually a, a somewhat real time view of what your school climate looks like at this point in time. Um, so that's, that's the project that I'm working on. And, um, I'm not that far ahead as, as Melissa. Um, it's still very much in like pilot mode. Um, but, uh, it's, it's like a slow, but, but sure process. There's a lot of like a bunch of coding and Google data studio stuff that I've never done before that I'm trying to learn in the process. So, but it's all about school climate for me. That's incredible. And uh, welcome also to the A to the B to the I to the D. Uh, Avid Patel, who uh, was in London 19, if I'm not mistaken, um, but was also a coach in uh, VIA 20 with me. Um, I know that Avid has uh, not been so well. So uh, if you feel like hopping on camera, and uh, letting us know about your problem, we are uh, really happy to have you here. But if you want to, if you want to lurk in the shadows, then that's also cool. <laughs> uh, hi, Lindsay. Yay! Thanks, for the intro. <laughs> Thanks for the intro. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just uh, popping in to say hi. Uh, I'm slowly getting myself back into uh, uh, into society after uh, uh, after. Um, uh, a heavy ordeal with COVID, shall we say? But um, no, it's, it's it's just great to see so many amazing innovators, and uh, and I I think everyone knows how I love getting involved with with anything innovator related. So um, uh, just great to see everyone here, and um, for um, any prospective um, innovators on the call, um, all I will say is is don't don't delay the first opportunity you get uh go for that application um don't be disheartened if you don't get in the first time uh, i i was i was lucky to be in london 19 with a few people who who 
you know, applied applied several times, but when they got in, it was abs- uh, absolutely amazing experience. And you make the most amazing friends uh, and and connections uh, that you, you couldn't ever imagine. For people who say to me, tell me what's so great about this innovator malarkey that you keep going on about. I say, the only thing I can, the only way I can describe it is think of the best professional development experience you've ever had in your life, multiply it by a million, and you might come close to what innovator is. Um, there's there's no other way to, to sort of uh, explain it. But um, yeah, no, uh, great to see everyone. And um, thanks for putting this on, uh, Lindsay, and keep up the great work. Amazing. So before you hop off, Abid, uh, what was your problem that you took to London 19? Um, my uh, my pro- pro- uh, was uh, how might we make digital transformation accessible to everyone, everywhere, and on any budget? And and of course, this this was something I came up in with in 2019, when there was no schools thinking about digital transformation, and I kept saying to schools, need to like consider thinking about digital transformation. And then I went on and 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 developed the the projects. Um, uh, it just works, uh, and we hosted we hosted an event. Uh, but obviously, halfway through that, um, something called COVID nineteen um, happened, and um, everyone started to do digital transformation. But um, you know, it was it was great uh, as part of my event to to see how how other schools have been have been doing that globally, and and I think that that's one of the great things is being able to go go vir- virtual um it opened up so many connections with other other educators from all around the world and seeing how other schools were doing uh, doing their digital transformation and you know um we're still out there uh, supporting schools uh, and you know if 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 you're in if you're in need for any advice on digital transformation and things like that then you know please feel free to reach out and uh, always here and happy to help Amazing. Thank you, Abed. And it, a perfect timing, Georgina. Um, so Georgina is another member of VIA20, uh, joining us from a man in Jordan. Um, so we were just chatting about, and we, we're keen to get the peeps on the call to share um, what sort of problems they're thinking about pitching to uh, to Google for their innovator applications. But uh, maybe you can do a quick little intro and tell us about uh, the problem that you are uh, busy trying to solve. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome everybody who is interesting on getting their Googly on. It is definitely now the time in this epic season, century, years ahead in education. So good luck to all of you. Uh, The problem that I've been working on is basically um, digital strategy through the leadership. So across education, how can leaders really support um, their schools when they don't have necessarily the information or the tools or the knowledge and skills to be able to support their education community. So um, basically working with school leaders globally to create a platform where they can connect and um, we have guest speakers that come in and all sorts of goodies so yeah we're trying to support basically school leaders in supporting ed tech integration across k-12 education when they may not have the skills or knowledge to do so amazing thank you you've actually got a couple of uh of ed tech leaders on the on the call so uh that's really really great that you've uh that you've been able to share your, your project with, with them and we, we look forward to hearing how that's going to turn out. Um, and there's a question for Melissa about submitting your application multiple times, whether you stuck, stuck with the same problem or whether you did a different one. Nope, I stuck with the same problem because that was my passion. Probably that's yeah. why it took three times. I just had to impro- improvise it and then keep like tweaking it and you know as I each time I applied I learned something you know from the previous application so I did change you know those pieces so but that was that was that was what I wanted and that was what I was passionate about you know I just didn't want to make something up because I wanted to get in I wanted to truly do what I want you know what I believed in so I stuck with it. 
That's that's really really important, I think. So um, I'd love to hear from those of you in the in the chat um, what problems. And this is a safe space, so please don't feel like you're being uh, you're being judged or that anything uh, any one problem has uh, more uh, merit or anything than anything else. But um, if you would like, if you've got some ideas, maybe you're tossing a couple of things up. Um, you've got some uh, some current innovators here with uh, great minds and great hearts to to give some feedback. So uh, please, won't you share that in the chat with us so that we can have a look at your problems and then we can start to think about diving a little bit deeper into uh, into those problems because I think that's really uh, like Melissa said, that's the heart of it, right? If you if you are not passionate about that problem, um, you're never going to see the process through, right? So there's no there's no point in trying to find, um, you know, take other people's problems or you know things that you think Google might be impressed with. Um, that's really really great advice, but it's something that's that's close to your heart. Mm -hmm. Let's have a read. Uh, and I think one one last bit from me, I'll I'll just chip in to say is always remember the the application golden rule, which is fall in love with the problem, not the solution. And what, what, they, what, the, the, uh, what, what the program wants to see is you really focus and hone in on what your problem is and don't go anywhere near a solution because that's the, that's the easiest way not to be accepted is if you even hint at a solution because that's what the academy is for, to, to develop your solution. But really, really fall in love with that problem. Thanks, Avid. We actually have the fall in love with the problem uh, slide later because it is, it's so very important. Uh, so Irene's popped in the chat there, uh, our resource site, but we'll definitely go ahead and add any other links and things that you guys are sharing to that. Um, and then uh, with everyone's permission, definitely share this on YouTube because I think it's going to be a great, uh, a great resource for prospective innovators to kind of hear this chat and to think through their problems and uh, and kind of dive a little bit deeper into them. Irene, do you want to um, kind of reflect on anyone's problems that they're sharing? Um, I've just looked at Ilonkas and um, she wants to solve how Afrikaans is taught. It's, it's one of our 11 official languages and um, how to make that um, you know, really more integrated. Um, should it be global or local? I think it can absolutely be local, particularly mm -hmm. in in um, developing countries such as ours, um, we, because you want to solve a problem on the ground. But whatever you you create, keep in the back of your mind: can it be replicated? Can it be scaled? Can it be used? For other languages, if you if you create this solution, will it be able to apply that solution to other languages and other contexts like Spanish, Spanish and and so on? But yeah, think exactly. local, but or act local, think global, right? Exactly, and I mean Claire also um, has specifically mentioned South Africa, so we don't focus on differentiated instruction or differentiated learning, um, and that schools really focus on formal assessments and kind of chasing marks rather than actual demonstrations of real learning and showing their understanding. And although that is a South African problem that I'm pretty sure all the South African teachers mm -hmm. can resonate with, uh, I'm pretty sure the, the international audience can give us a thumbs up <laughs> that that is not a problem that's unique to um, to South Africa. And similarly, um, Kerry's problem around um, classrooms that don't cater for all learning styles, that there's, you know, really just this kind of blanket style of teaching that um, that doesn't reach all of the students. In fact, yours and Claire's are very, very similar, right? And this is what happens, actually, is that even as you chat about these things, you realize, hang on, we're passionate about the same things. So, uh, you know, feel free to pull a Lindsay and Irene and, and start collaborating and sharing ideas, you know, now already. Um, because one of the beautiful things is that you don't need permission to even start to understand and tackle um, tackle these problems now, right? Um, anyway, I think, I, say, um, I think I was just uh, chatting about, Claire's, would Google accept something that is South African specific? Absolutely. Lindsay's project was ZA Edu yeah, yeah. Tribe. Yeah. It was all about bringing South African teachers together. So mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Yeah, and one of the things which we'll mention again later is that it can be a uniquely South African project. Um, but what Google is looking for is whether 
what you come up with as a solution is replicable in other contexts, right? So although my project was ZA Edu Stories, um, you know, you could do um, an AU Edu Stories or you could, you know, other teachers in other countries can replicate that same idea and that same project. Um, you know, something like Melissa's, you know, Learning for Little Ease, we could take our South African curriculum and we could adapt it. So it can be uniquely South African as long as it is internationally kind of scalable and um and replicable right? replicable right um i'm loving also um uh yeah so kerry's mentioning another problem around empowering girls um that are interested to become engineers and pursue kind of careers in stem and it specialists and developers uh, irene and i can tell you from our experience of developing purple za that we really wish there were more girl developers <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> That's another story for another day, but definitely something to um, to consider. Um, and Carissa, we're going to answer your questions around like what are the preparations and the levels. But I think um, it's not really about whether you're good enough. It's around do you have a problem that is pressing on your heart that you actually really want to solve. That's what it really is about. It's not about mm -hmm. How much tech knowledge do you have, or um, you know how how many uh, um, kind of presentations you've done, or what have you? And we'll look at some of the things that Google is looking for in the application process in terms of the nitty gritty a little later. But what really is um, important is that you think, and you're an innovative person because you think about problems and you try and find solutions to them. Like that's kind of how you're um, you're wired, right? And like Paul was saying earlier, he's still busy with his because there's some things that he's never done and he's trying to learn that now. Mm. I think that's the whole point. You kind of learn on the job. You know, you, you just have the problem. Exactly. And the, the how we'll figure out in the academy and with your connections mm -hmm. that as long as you've got your, there's no solution that you need to know or tech that you need to know at this point. Exactly. And I think the main thing is like, does your problem, um, it says project there, but it could probably say problem. Like, does your problem drive change in education? Like, is it a something related to education? Um, is it like we said, replicable and accessible? So can it be translated into other contexts? Not just like, this is a problem that I have in my classroom with this thing and it doesn't apply anywhere else. And then also, does it address part of Google's transformation framework? So Google um, actually has got this uh, transformation framework, which has seven different areas of uh, education, if you like, um, that uh, they are looking for um, or looking to support innovative solutions in. So um, Irene's project kind of uh, quite obviously ticked the professional development box, but also relating to school culture and the culture around professional development. Um, obviously, both of us touched on uh, technology and on, uh, uh, and then mine was really also around community engagement and how do we build a, a community, but also things like the learning approach. So I'm thinking Kerry's problem, um, Claire's problem speak kind of specifically to that but it doesn't even have to be it can be something as simple as you know sustainability so particularly because we're in the Af on the african continent um we're still battling massive you know technology challenges connectivity challenges sustainability challenges so it's not just about um you know innovation <laughs> as uh, as uh, what's the guy dr evil would say if inequality is something that you're particularly passionate about and you want equal access um you know issues relating to to diversity and inclusivity are also things that are really really close to um to google's heart um kerry you definitely can if you have microsoft credentials also get google ones i know a couple of uh of Google peeps who also have certifications from Apple and or Microsoft. Um, there is no, this is about your professional development. So you can enroll in whatever programs you um, you like, definitely. Um, and yeah, like what, uh, in, in fact, I'd love, I, I see there's a couple of quiet people. Hi, Emma, if you've, uh, and a couple, Joe is here. Uh, Marina is here, Wusi. Um, if you have any problems that you're thinking, mm, I don't know, is this something that could kind of connect? Is this a good idea? Um, a good problem is really something that grates your carrots. 
right? That's something that you are ridiculously passionate about that irritates you that you feel like, you know what, this thing, it's actually just my, you know, like that's the thing that really gets to me. Um, and something that is, it's around education and innovation and, uh, and creating a passion for, uh, in others for the things that so many of us are passionate about. I think um, those are definitely some of the things that make uh, a good problem. Uh, anybody else want to chat, drop in the chat something that you're thinking about, even if you're not quite sure? Beautiful, Joe. Lovely. So, again, like similar passions even to um, to Kerry and Claire. I know we've got uh, Ilonka and Amoret passionate around the second language learning and Joe really passionate around, you know, that differentiation, not leaving any of our students behind, catching them all um, and designing learning in a way like that. It's amazing. Yeah, and Joe is in the um, in um, the support academic support role. So there's a lot of kids that are mainstream that have various difficulties, and um, yeah, that is a really great problem to try and solve, right? What well, because our schools are kind of not geared <laughs> to 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 individuals, are they? Incredible. And Marina's who's in the tertiary sector, um, definitely a great problem to address um, around um, how we can integrate ed tech and we can, uh, you know, in those more rigid for want of a less, uh, a less uh, offensive potentially term, right, um, in the kind of the red tape of academia and, uh, and that area, how do we, um, you know, how do we integrate technology and how do we make the learning progressive and innovative um, in that in that context? Incredibly, incredibly important. Um, Yo, Kerry, you've got a lot of problems, eh? <laughs> <laughs> she's full of she's full of ideas. So uh, I think one of the things, and this is a key takeaway in terms of your um, your application that we wanted to share with you is uh, that idea of who does this problem um, actually affect, right? Or in, a, in, a, in kind of design thinking terms, who is the, um, the user, right? So Larry Page, who uh, was one of the founders of Google, um, said, focus on the user and all else will follow. So who is it that you are actually solving this problem for? And some problems have got multiple users, right? Like, uh, thanks, Melissa. Um, uh, like the, you know, where uh, if you're looking at whole school change, then you might have leadership and you might have, uh, you know, your, your students and your teachers and, and all of those things. But one of the key things to kind of tap into is, starting to think about who is your user because uh, something that we really recommend so we they used to do this actually before the academy um, but now it's actually become part of the application process is getting to understand and know your user and writing a point of view statement that uh, articulates and kind of demonstrates the problem from your user's perspective okay so uh this kind of point of view statement basically um it's almost got like a little bit of a formula so maybe we can have a go at creating a couple of these um in the chat as you think about and carrie you're gonna have to pick one of your problems now um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pick it for your application but you have to pick one for now um so who is the person right um so maybe in Marinus's uh, problem, it would be a, a particular lecturer, right? Some of your problems might be students, some might be children, parents, uh, you know, leadership, board members, who knows? Um, but think about, you know, you can give them a pseudonym. So this person is a what? So tell us a little bit about this person, all right? What are they wanting to do? All right, and this is kind of important, I think, because a lot of the time with innovation, we're like, they want to innovate in their class. And you're like, really? Do they? Um, you know, or what is it that that teacher wants to do? And then um, a little bit of insight about that particular 
um, person. Lovely, Lucy, awesome. Thank you for sharing. So if you want to have a go, once you've had a think about your problem, um, at seeing if you can craft a little point of view statement where it is somebody, you can make up a name, they are a what? So tell us a little bit about that person. What do they need? Right? What do they really need? And uh, why do they need that? Well, because they value something, right? So, um, and this is key in, uh, in understanding the user is that often we like, I know exactly what you need. You need this thing. Right, but real design thinking starts with somebody else's problem that you are passionate about, not just your problem that you're passionate about that nobody else cares about, if that makes any sense. So um, if you want to have a go at writing a little point of view statement, the best way to get these point of view statements kind of worked really well is actually to interview people, right? To have a conversation, to sit down and go, I'm trying to help second language teachers, right? Chat to as many second language teachers as you can, um, ask them questions, really understand the problem from their perspective, not just yours. Um, but of course now we don't have that luxury. So if you want to have a go at writing a little point of view statement as to how you think the problem might look from that user's point of view. <laughs> Nice, Ilanka. <laughs> yeah. Super. Yeah, Paul, totally. You can chat to people, you can conduct interviews all online, and I think that's a whole lot more normal now than it used to be. So that does make it a, a lot easier. Uh, we see I'm loving your problem around with the students, create individual learning pathways, right? So you might have two users there. You might have the teacher and the student. You can write a point of view statement from, from either user. Love that idea of individual learning pathways. So cool, Lucy. We'll I'm just going to read some of them out loud so that when we have the recording, people know what we're chatting about. So Johnny is a student in a classroom who needs to be able to show his learning using his voice recorder on his device because writing a paragraph to give his answer is not his strength. Lovely. Um, interesting, Claire. So the second part of your sentence where you're saying writing a paragraph is not his strength, that does give us some insight into, uh, into Johnny. I'd love to hear how you could rephrase that sentence to articulate what is important to Johnny, right? What is Johnny actually really, what is Johnny value? What matters to Johnny? Um, so writing a paragraph may not be his strength, but what is important to Johnny? So you see if you can add in a little bit to that point of view statement to see what Johnny values. Well, maybe move the... Um the thing that's not his strength, he needs a way to something, something um, to yeah. there. And Johnny is like using his voice as already as kind of a solution, right? It is, yeah. Um, so you can be a little more, yeah. So it's a careful balance between being too broad and being too um, specific, right? So we're looking at trying to not give a solution. What is Johnny actually? So I would say Johnny is a student who struggles with paragraph writing. Mm. And he needs a way to express himself. his ideas because he values. You can finish that part. Uh, Ava is an eager student who is curious about how things work. Because of her passion for coding, she's been encouraged to become extroverted and confident in sharing her ideas or programming the EV3 robots to perform the functions they need to perform. OK. So, You've started off really well, giving us a lot of understanding about um, uh, Ava's uh, characteristics. What we want to know is what does she need to be able to do, right? So all of that statement is what Ava needs to be able to do, so uh, or who she is, right? So what is she trying to do, and then what is it that Ava particularly values? So have a see, have a look and see if you can massage and rework and reshuffle that statement to give us a little more insight into into Ava. 
Jimmy is a little who finds school boring and meaningless. Okay. Uh, he needs a way to learn about things which matter to him, things that excite him and enthusiasm, enthusiasm, sorry, so that school becomes a place of interactive learning. So there's a solution implied in there. <laughs> <laughs> Irene, do you want to help, uh, help with that one? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, he finds school boring and he wants to um, have a more exciting way to, you know, uh, be it to interact in the classroom or to learn um, because he is an active little boy and he da 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 da. But if you already are saying um, he needs an interactive way of learning, that is already a solution that is implied but you can kind of say he's an active cut boy he wants you know he needs a different way of expressing himself but it's a good yeah. it's a good um it's a good right. problem you said he so you could that sentence where you said he wants to learn about things which matter to him you can say because he values learning about things that matter to him mm -hmm. so once he, he exactly just switch it around um, and take out the, the solution emphasis. Okay, let's give you guys a little bit of time because I know we're talking a lot, so you're probably like, shh, I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone else wants to have a go at a point of view statement, then we can give you some feedback if you like and help you really tweak that to be user-specific and not problem-centered. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm a red. Okay, so, well, Ilonka sends about Amoret. Amoret is an innovative second language teacher who needs a way to enhance uh, their subject relevance and future focused because they want their learners to immerse themselves and develop their future focus competencies. I feel like there's a whole lot going on there and I would actually split that into two separate point of view statements. I don't know what you think, Irene. Yeah, I would... I would be a bit more specific. So if you really had to say it to your granny mm. or to somebody who doesn't teach, yeah. is not a teacher, what would you say is Amarit's problem? Yeah, yeah she, she's, uh, she's innovative, but her problem is that her subject is what? And what does she need now? Like if you could put it in a bit more, yeah. um, like plainer language so that the, the problem becomes more obvious. Yeah, maybe that will. There's a great book, by the way, called Weekend Language, which is about translating these things that can kind of be jargony. So, in your application to Google, you can use the jargon, but in a point of view statement, that literally needs to be like, "What are we? Um, what? Are, what are we? What's the problem in plain, simple terms?" So, when I was looking at, um, mine was Fred is a math teacher who needs a way to understand what an innovative math lesson looks like because he values being um, a great teacher but feels confused about what that even looks like. And I think if I decode yours, Ilonka, it's probably uh, Amoret is a creative person and she loves her subject, but she's frustrated because she um, cannot use the 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 future focused technologies in her subject um, or you want to say uh, and she wants to use um, technologies that will empower her students but she can't because the subject doesn't allow it or something that's the problem and Paul sharing in the chat that he went through so many of these so we don't we don't expect everybody to get to the perfect one this afternoon by any stretch we just want to give you a little bit of help and coaching because it is it's really 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 tough it's not a kind of thinking that we've done uh, before when we went to uh, den 18 we actually did this only at the academy but now google has made this and one more type of statement which we're going to get to in a moment part of the the application mm -hmm. process so we really want to help you kind of unpack it. And it is, it, it is really around actually understanding the, the problem. Because um, even when you guys mentioned the problems, uh, I know and resonate with those problems so much, but I'm like, 
it's my perspective that you are not reaching all of the students or it's my perspective that you need to be uh you know creating a better culture in or you need to be a more innovative lecturer but we are never, never going to be able to give a solution. To, it's like somebody buying you an outfit and it's not your taste, you know. Um, so we really need to understand what is it that they need so that we can, when we are at the academy, start to think about what is the solution look like for, uh, for them rather than what do I think that everybody needs from my perspective. But keep writing these. Oh, and totally. I just want to say, uh, look, we are not going to solve this no. and get your application 100% this afternoon, but spend quite a little bit of time on this. And Lindsay and I are really keen to, to help you to get this right. So please email and say, look, I've got these point of view statements and we can set up some time with you to talk through these and the next statement that Lindsay is going to go through as well um, to tweak it even more. This is just to kind of get your thinking going. And as you can see, other people's uh, statements and the, the the feedback we give there that will kind of inform your thinking as you as you try this out for yourself. Exactly, and it and it really is. It's a process of uh, iteration. Is a word that you will come to know uh, <laughs> and be very close to your heart. Uh, we 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 joke and kind of uh, in a kind of joking way, but actually. We're on iteration 317 of Purple ZA um, because that's that's part of the innovative mindset, right? Is being reflexive and kind of battling with these things and narrowing them down and manipulating them. Um, Irene, do we, are you reading Joe's one? Uh, no, I was reading Vusi's. Okay, cool. Then I oh, can you may read Joe's quickly. So there's also a solution in there already, maybe. Mm. So I think just your last sentence is kind of the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe said, uh, Josh is an investor teacher who has a real connection with his students. He needs a way to identify and get help from the entire pastoral team uh, who have expertise in various ways to help learners in his classroom with more insight because he values and sees all his learners and want to ensure that no learner gets left behind. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think actually that, that could be the end. Mm -hmm. It is kind of how do, I, how, do I, how do I bring all of the academic pastoral uh, support team together for one child? How can we create a solution around that? And that's what you will do at the academy then. But mm. uh, um, I think you kind of unpack the, the solution <laughs> at the end to just, I would just skip that part. And uh, I love your uh, statement as well, uh, Busi, mm. which is <laughs> he needs, he's a creative young man who enjoys visual and drama, and he needs to have a way to film it because he wants to make money for his tertiary education. So there's a lot there, which mm. is about financial sustainability, mm. which is about practical skills, which is about um, teaching things that can translate into real life mm. uh, entrepreneurship things. So I think there's a great problem there. I would I would work a little bit around how how to put it. Um, yeah, how to how to create the point of view statement, but I think there's a, a, a great a great problem there with a lot of potential. Absolutely, <laughs> solutions. Yeah. So, um, like Irene said, we're very happy to keep on uh, on working with you on those and uh, and brainstorming. Uh, the good the good news is that uh, the next Virtual Innovator Academy. Um, has not been announced yet. So we've definitely got some time to work on uh, on those applications. So don't stress about that. Um, and I think if Irene and I look at the version history of our application docs, you will see um, hundreds and hundreds of iterations. And then there's the problem of a word limit that you've got to get it to fit in and uh, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it really does take a, um, take, take a lot of time to uh, to kind of get your head around it and, and to get that point of view statement um, perfect. But the key thing is that that is then the user for whom you are going to be designing, right? So really, really important that we that we get to grips with uh, 
with what well with who the user is um and then from that uh you would have actually heard abed when i asked him earlier i said uh, what was your problem and he said how might we <laughs> Um, and if you look on the, the Innovator resource site that we've uh, popped the link in the chat to you a couple of times, just shout if you joined late and you need that. Um, but if you have a look at the resource site, then you'll see um, underneath my video and Irene's video are a number of different sort of how might we problems or questions that we were looking at in uh, in terms of our applications but if we zoom out almost a little bit from the user and start to look at a framing the question around the problem um, as a how might we state statement, which I love because the word might just implies so much kind of possibility. Um, maybe Paul, do you want to share if you can remember uh, what your original and or revised how might we uh, question was just to give us a little bit of insight? Put you on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, um... Uh, the the how might we statement I, I think I um it was probably the most time consuming part of the application process mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's um you know I I started on one and I can't remember how many iterations of it that I went through because mm -hmm. the more and more that I would think about it that developed into more questions and different turns and it really kind of focused in on um um it it really kind of changed the project basically. Yeah, no, I think um, I think mine was. Well, actually, I'll, I'll let me pull up the. Uh, I want to get right word for word because <laughs> it took a long time to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I do have I do have it here. I'm gonna grab something quickly. This here. I'll, I'll, I'll type it in the chat too. I can. I've just grabbed mine off my uh, my wall from one of the activities that we did at the academy, which is stuck up, up up here in my office. So mine was, how might we build the ZAAG community in an energized, interactive, and collaborative space? Okay, I'll type it in the chat here. Um, yeah. So mine was. How might we create sustainable, positive climates in schools so that students, parents, and educators experience a personal sense of belonging? Oh, that's so lovely. Beautiful. Love that. Yeah. And I think it really is once you have, after a thousand attempts, you do have that final how might we statement, and that's your problem. Then it really is a case of falling in love with that problem and not with a solution because um and this is i think key it is all about the problem because you'll work in the academy on the problem and although you might have in the back of your mind a solution um it's going to change and it's going to even your problem is going to change but the, the core of it is the thing that you must really really believe in there is uh because of two reasons. The one is um, the solutions will change. And there is even an idea graveyard in Google. Google is a great company uh, because they just, they, they, they live kind of by two uh, philosophies. The one is living in beta. So they always launch before they're ready. They never wait for it to be perfect. They kind of just go and then say, give feedback, give feedback, give feedback, right? you'll never see a Google product that is actually completed. And that way they get a lot of users, giving them real feedback to make it really, really good. And the other philosophy that they live by is moonshot thinking. So think of the, the most amazing, creative, and fantastic thing like, can we photograph the whole of the earth, kind of big moonshot thinking, and then let's see if we can make it happen. Of course, And then they do, they make these products and some of them work, because of the beta, because of the moonshot, and some of them don't, right? So there are lots of there, there are lots of products that Google um, can, and there's even a little Google graveyard that you can go to, and you can put your flower there on the grave. I, I still go back to I don't know if any of you remember I Google. I still go back there and put a flower on the grave every now and then because I miss it. It was like a home page that you could 
home like your it was just great it was like a a chrome home page but that you could customize with your calendar and your mails and the quote of the day and your sudoku and your whatever's anyway um but the even things that you love will your will say kill your darlings right so you must love your problem but be but hold your ideas lightly because um, they might change, but hold your passion tightly. And um, the other reason why you must really, really love your problem is because this is what your plan looks like, right? You're going to go there and solve this problem. What it really is going to look like is this, right? There will be some fires, there will be some floods, there will be some storms, there will be uh, rerouting, there will be a whole lot of other things that you did not account for. And you, there's not a simple way from A to B. And um, when you get to the end of it, there's still a lot to do. And <laughs> the bike might, uh, you know, the vehicle with which you do it might end up in the bottom of a dam or in the sea, and you'll have to rethink and plan again. And I can speak from personal experience and Lindsay as well. This you're going to be spending the next three, four years of your life on this problem. And in this, this scenario, you are going to hire developers, fire developers. You're going to find other things that you didn't know were things. You're going to rethink everything you've done and restructure it. But in the end, when you look back at it at four years or so later, you must still think, gosh, I still think this is good. This is still what matters to me. And if you can um, measure every decision that you make and say, does it really solve the problem that I want to solve? Um, that is really super important that you are that passionate about your problem and that you fall in love with it. And then um, also, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, you also have to um, embrace the karaoke mindset, right? Because you really need to get um, comfortable with being uncomfortable. All of those solutions you think you had, people will pull them apart. All of the ways that you thought this is how it should be, people will tell you it will not work. Um, all of the things that you think, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough, you're going to have to stand there and sing, whether you have a voice or not, right? And have to put yourself out there. Um, so just be brave and adopt the karaoke mindset and just think about it as I'm just going to have fun with this and not uh, forget that that is why you are doing it. And also karaoke is kind of part of innovator culture. So yeah. this was this was us in Copenhagen. Um, but we even had in the VIA uh, virtual graduation party, uh, we had breakout rooms and there was, I, I, w I won't show you the video of that because let's just say <laughs> it's not quite as pretty as this one, but it really is around, um, yeah, just that mindset of, of giving it a go and standing up and singing your heart out because that is the thing that matters to you. Um, and really, yeah, putting yourself out there and knowing that this is not a, this is not a comfortable process. Like, I mean, uh, Irene and I have fought, we have argued, we have <laughs> spent all night deciding on uh, fonts and goodness knows what. One font, yes. One font. Because dollars. Lindsay can't wrap her head around that you should have a serif and a sans together because she can, she cannot align with serif fonts so yeah, I can. <laughs> but in all seriousness it is it, it's a yeah. it's a crazy journey and i think the the more passionate you are about the problem um the more you are able to adopt that that mindset and see see the things <laughs> Oh. So See the thing <laughs> to, uh, to you know to kind of solution uh, solution point. 
So we've, we've given you a little bit of a sneak peek there of uh, the, the actual experience at the um, academy. But uh, just to show you a couple more uh, snapshots. So when we went to uh, Copenhagen, we spent three days at the Google offices. Um, and you get taken through a design thinking process and really kind of start to understand your problem, work with those how might we statements, ideate and iterate and do all sorts of incredible um, activities and also obviously meet, um, and you've got a little bit of a flavor of that today, some incredible thinkers from uh, across the globe. Um, I uh, found this photo of uh, li the literal start um, of designing Purple ZA on uh, paper and post-it notes and kind of thinking, okay, what does this thing look like and what buttons go where? And this was sort of towards the end of uh, of the academy. Um, and I showed you now the one piece of paper that I left with and Irene's also got a similar, um, you know, large map of, of all of these ideas and processes that, uh, that Google takes you through to really get you to um, to kind of have a solution um, that you are passionate on being behind. And then uh, Google actually, so not only do you have a coach at the um, academy, so we were each um, in a team of six and then each team had a coach, but then Google matches you up with an innovator who then serves as your mentor for a whole year. So you've kind of officially got a year, but as you've heard, we. We sort of uh, we launched a very beta version at the end of our year, and then uh, kind of carried on building and working on the project. But um, it's a journey that uh, you know doesn't kind of start and stop once you got your badge. Uh, when you get the badge at the academy, that's kind of like the we see you see that you're an innovator, but that's actually the um, the beginning of the journey. And then, uh, like I said earlier, so um, with the world flipping on its head. Uh, the Innovator Academy this year became uh, VIA 20, which was a virtual academy. Um, and I was fortunate enough to coach um, one of the teams. But I don't know, uh, Paul is still with us. Do you want to share a little bit about your experience of, um, of the virtual academy to give everyone a bit of a taster? No, uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's um, I, I think it's something like, I can't remember how many weeks it was. It was like eight weeks long, or I, something yeah. like that. And um, um, I, I think what traditionally all, all the academies were were like maybe like three days long, two three days long. Yeah. And so um, from what we were told is, you know, having this online experience, we actually got to really. It, it was it was great. It was fantastic because we I, you know we met um, almost like basically like once a week, especially with your with your teams. Um, but you really got to because of the time you really got to actually think hard and long about your your project and get to you know dive in deep and you know tear it apart and put it back together again in a different way um, but no every single meeting was like something i always look forward to because you end up having a big big family in the end um, so it's 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 fantastic it's it's it really is life changing absolutely incredible and i think like uh, I mean, I just included a couple of pictures. Um, there, there's so many, but even the design thinking um, activities, like every we had the shared photo album. Um, everyone was in a team, so um, uh, Paul and Melissa were on team on mute, and I was coaching the uh, the I team, um, where we had uh, some some Scots and UK and Najib from Nigeria, um, and we we kind of have one big meeting with everyone. Um, and then you'd have a separate session with your coach. And then the program is super, super exciting because those are the ones you kind of have to attend. But then there are optional sessions presented by um, Googlers, so people who actually work at Google. Uh, there were social sessions really designed to kind of facilitate that family thing um, where they'd kind of give you chat prompts and games and all sorts of stuff. I know Melissa, who was here earlier, she and I landed up in a little chat uh, discussion around equity and uh, and what that looks like for us in our different countries and it really is just an incredible truly international uh, experience and i mean uh, this lady from uh, italy she made the little mascot what was his name googleish i think um and uh, there's a there's a, a chat stream that runs all the way through 24 7. the chat streams carry on in fact that's how i kind of let everyone know so our DNA team chat is still going. We're still popping in updates. Like 
you know, people uh, have kids or they like launch a project or they do something um, and they're still sharing and it really becomes um, an incredible community. And I think knowing you guys or many of you guys on the call, I think a lot of the time we feel kind of like lone rangers a little bit in our uh, in our schools where we kind of like the only ones who are um, you know who, who are singing the innovation song for one of a, a better term. But uh, even they even managed on a virtual innovator academy to get the traditional uh, class photo um, happening, which I thought was absolutely incredible. So a lot of people said. Um, you know, a lot of people were worried that like the, the online academy wouldn't be, you know, the same as the in-person one. But actually, I totally echo what Paul said. I think um, in many ways it's better. You don't have to um, have a, like a whole chunk of time and commitment. There's no financial um, costs. So like we had to pay our own way to Copenhagen. Uh, you don't have that. You've got a lot of time to work through your project. And uh, what we did in three days is now kind of done over eight weeks. So really, really deep work. Um, I think you leave the virtual academy with your project a whole lot further along um, than, uh, than we did, which means you can, it's kind of easier, I think, to maintain the momentum when you go back to normal life. Um, that's definitely a, a massive, massive advantage. So, uh, do you want to share anything about the academy before we help these peeps with some more tips around their application, Irene? Um, no, I think I think they got a good uh, taste of it, and I think it's time to get a bit practical. I don't know if you refresh mm -hmm. your um, your thing uh, and just go back one slide, Lens. So sure. really, into yeah, just go back one if you can. So really, it's as as easy as. What is well, it's not that easy, but just the overview mm -hmm. is this is what you will need to do. So you'll need to have your level two uh, Google exam. We'll talk about this a bit later as well. You'll need to have the problem to solve and to write it in uh, your how might we statement. Then there's the written application. The details of all of this is on the resource site that we've. Uh, uh, shared with you and Lindsay's going to talk about that application process a bit later as well um, and then the, the fourth thing and probably the biggest thing um, is this video that you have to create for your application so I thought I'd just uh, give you a little bit of a, uh, a kind of a checklist of what you should show in this 90 second video that you create okay. Kerry is dying to know <laughs> what tool you use to make your video. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Um, so, okay, so let's say um, you've got 90 seconds, which is not a lot of time to pose your entire question, but you know, uh, creativity comes from constraints. So within that, you are, you are able to create uh, something great. The first 30 seconds should be about you, your personality, who you are, uh, what it is that you do, and how you've made a, a, a difference in the community. And then the last 60 seconds is all about what your passion is, what your problem is that you want to solve, um, showing that you have empathy and understand the people that you are solving for, the users, um, you also want to show that you are kind of great with technology. So your uh, video needs to show that you know what you're doing and that you're creative. Um, and then there's also something that Google looks for that is, are you googly? Uh, so that is, are you a little bit quirky or wacky or at least do you have passion, right? Um, are you an activist? Do you, do you feel strongly about things? Um, and that is why I think the community that you will land up in will be one of the best places in your life because all of these people are so quirky, wacky, passionate <laughs> activists with creative ideas. So um, that's like what you want to show in your video. Yeah, um, like you try on steroids, basically. Exactly, exactly. So that's kind of a, a big task. So I'm not going to unpack all of that for you, but I would just give like a couple of pointers. Um, and the first one is that it would be good to kind of think about a concept for your video. So like Lindsay's, you'd remember it was all about um, the weapons and the kind of the 
the African Zulu uh, symbols and how that there are different spears and directions for these, but how they all grow together. Mine was all about um, using little drawings and 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 annotating pictures and things. So if you can kind of think of a look and feel and stick to one or two things and a color scheme. So if you look at the picture on the left, this is a very boring one, but you know it's kind of one look and feel. Whereas the one on the right is the, then you've got like curtains opening. Now you've got a blue background. Now you've got lines. Now you've got. Um, uh, it's just too many things happening. So if you can kind of just think of one look and feel, one concept or, or one consistent element that runs through like a circle or a black background or a black line or something that kind of brings a cohesive element to it. Uh, then I think in terms of how to create your video, uh, tip, the way I've done it, uh, so tips that I can give you from my perspective is if you're using anything on your phone, uh, so there's an app that's only available on mobile, then I use just a screen record there and download it as an MP4. Um, and remember, if you do do any interviews like Lindsay had in her video or uh, to always have it as landscape, because when you put this thing together, you don't want half of your stuff to be black on the side, right? So um, you screen record your phone or video, or uh, if you're using a mobile app, just remember the landscape. And then I actually surprisingly um, just mostly used slides. And I used a variety of Google Keynote and um, I didn't use PowerPoint, but you could use PowerPoint. Um, and then the beauty of Keynote and PowerPoint is that those slides can be downloaded as GIFs, they can be downloaded as movies. So actually the previous um, slide that I showed you, I, those were both just quick slides that I put together and downloaded as GIFs um, with ideas. So, um, and then as long as you download them as MP4 movie files or as GIFs, you can then stitch them together in the end in a program like v we video or uh, iMovie. But to make the separate little bits, I would say phone, keynote, or any slides uh, presentation thing. And then the other element that I used was this uh, website, biteable.com, which um, I think, Lindsay, can I take over from you for a minute? Yes, you can. I'd love it open, but you can go. Um, this oh did you okay, but I've got a log in one here. All right, am I on? I'm off, so you can go. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so when you go to Biteable, you'll see it's got lots of templates, like um, uh, so you might have uh some that are with 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 people or with some animations uh, others might be like this and you can when you create a video let's go to start with an empty video you'll see they are different uh, options that you could use and when I spoke about have one concept or one idea this is kind of a nice place where you can find one concept or idea together so this is the clay people thing so if I open this one for example and you want to make your whole um, video using little clay people or things like that you'll see there's a find your way clip there's a, a that clip, here's some balancing clip, here's something about, and you can change the words and the writing, but there's a, they're just really cute, the clay, for example, but then uh, obviously there are others. I just wanna show one more that I think is useful, even if you use little bits of that, like, um, and you'll, you'll recognize some of these from my video. Um, where is that one?
Mm, I don't know which one it was now. But let me look at this one. Sorry, let me just read new releases, simple infographics. Let me go for infographics. I think the nice thing is that like you don't have to make the whole video in this, but if you've got a specific, you know, to kind of use use one element or kind of one design element throughout, but then instead of having to recreate all of the graphics and kind of add that quirkiness, um, there's some really nice loads of different options in that one that, that work really well. Yes, exactly. And there are about a hundred templates like these that each have about mm -hmm. two hundred slides that are animated. So this one. This one I actually yeah, I used because I was lying on the floor because I can't do exercise, right? Um, and there's the take me to Google, please, the airplane. So you can use little bits of that and mm -hmm. use those elements to create a consistent look and feel in your in your video. Okay, Lindsay, you can take over again if you like. Or, or okay. cool. um, and there's more tech that we can tell you about because, of course, everybody wants to know about the tech. Yes. So I think, yeah, Biteable is a great thing. And then I just want to point out PowerPoint has this great um, transition between slides that people don't really know about or use, and it's called Morph. So what it will do is both of these are examples of Morph. This one is fragment and morph so it like breaks up whatever image you've got and then you can write in those different images those little fragments and it can bring it back in a way or you can just rearrange the things in your slide like the letters and that can go in a different place look at the super hero where you've got different little elements and then the way it just moves back together to a place it's just done with a, tr a slide transition really so on the first slide you've got your elements um, where you have them and then you duplicate the slide and you put the elements in a different place on the slide and when you do the morph transition it will have that smooth moving a moving of the element or um, if you've got a small circle and you want it to become a big circle it's also just a slide transition this is similar if you're using Apple products, uh, Keynote, it's called Magic Move, but it's pretty much the same thing. As you can see, um, it will take a, a, a shape that you've got, and then I change that little capsule shape to a round shape or to another capsule shape, and it can just kind of move and swirl. I think it gives a good professional, uh, and it's easy. I mean, it's easy to put your words, your messaging in there, and it's really just PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah, that's also what I used for the innovation, the words and then the arrows that came at it. Um, I just used Keynote and Magic Move um, and then exported that as a, a video. Yeah. Um, then the next one, um, if you play that part, you'll see. We both use this one, yeah. So we see the squiggles of the handwriting of the. the um, the uh, heartbeat and just after this you'll see also where I had where I, so I was thinking about and then there's like the question marks here right so that is actually called a line drawing animation also in keynote so if you have access to an iPad or borrow one from somebody um, it's you You put in an image and you take a pencil and you draw over that uh, image or you draw it freehand if you have any creative or artistic bone in your body, which I don't have. No, um, no, you can trace. You can trace. So I don't, I'm not. Yeah, that's what I mean. You trace it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I did with the tree. So the, the lines that you grew out of the tree, I put the image underneath and then I just pulled the image out and made the animation. So you don't even have to be autistic at all. <laughs> exactly. So then you, you trace over it, you draw and one and delete the image behind it when you're done. And then you you put in, it's like one of those, it's not a transition from slide to slide, it's an animation. So you know how you have things that pop or bounce or swirl, right? Inside a slide, it's just one of those and it just animates your drawing for you. So it 
let's get your starting point and the end point. So it's a really a cute thing to use and give some life to your to your um, to your uh, video. Again, this line drawing or this slide can then be downloaded as a GIF or it can be downloaded as an MP4, and then you'll probably at the end have eight or nine or ten little little bits so you'll have your line drawing and you'll have your shape that be, went bigger and you'll have your biteable bit with a tick mark so you'll have all of these little bits download them all as images or mp4s and then use something like imovie or we video if you're using windows um, to stitch them all together and to get the timing right so you'll first have to write your script and practice it and read it out a hundred times until you know for sure it's 90 seconds on the dot. And then you will uh, change the length of the little bits of your clips in something like iMovie or video or we video to be also exactly 90 seconds and so that the sound bites will be where you need them to be on those videos. So then you'll narrate a uh, voiceover over it once you're done and you've got the whole thing stitched together. And then you can also add some background music if you want. And, and a little a little a little tip. So Irene didn't do it, but I know I know some other innovators like myself and others who've uh, gone with something with a little bit of an African flavor, um, which you know. Can, can can be a good idea. I'm not saying you have to do it, but uh, if uh, if you feel like it fits with your your look and your feel and your messaging, um, and I know particularly that Google are def definitely looking for innovators in Africa. So um, you know, kind of emphasizing Africanness in some way um, is also a good thing. Yeah. So all of you asking whether you know is local okay? Can it be local? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, it's going to be probably count in your favor. Um, so on the resource site, all of these links and, and ideas and more is under the video tab. But you'll also see in there, I've, uh, I've kind of outlined exactly what needs to be aware in the video. Um, I didn't add the African flavor, Lindsay, but maybe we can chat about that now in the, okay, so the actual application process and what that looks like. Absolutely. So if you have a look on the home page of the resource site, um, what we've done there is uh, actually I'm just going to hop over there now so that I can uh, show you what we're talking about at the same time. Um, so what we've done is just tried to curate some things to help you with your um, with your application process. So there's the video page, which has got all of the resources that Irene um, chatted you through. Uh, the very first link is the Innovator homepage. So that is where um, you can find all of the information from um, from Google's side uh, in terms of what you need for your application, and that's actually where you apply. Uh, it's also where they will announce. So at the moment, there is an online cohort open for the uh, APAC, so the Asia Pacific um, region of the world. But we are hoping uh, hoping that they will soon open an EMEA one, um, and then also one for the Americas because we love our American friends too. Of course, being virtual, it does need to be kind of uh, time zone oriented, which uh, makes it a little bit easier for it to. Karine, um, <laughs> uh, you're still on camera, hey, with your eye rolling. <laughs> Um, so, I'm yeah. sorry. I just realised I need I need to pay my daughter. So I'm trying to count. I'm rolling my eyes because I'm counting. Sorry. Um, don't worry. This is only going on YouTube. Um, and then <laughs> on the resource side as well, we put the transformation um, elements as well as the Google Transformation Center itself, and then a little bit of help with your. Um, how might we and point of view statements. There's also the application rubric, which you can find on Google's website. But um, that gives you quite a lot of information around what it is that you need to show in your application. So I'll give you guys a kind of a summary of that um, uh, soon. And then Google also has a feature project section which is really nice to kind of see the diversity I think of the things that Google is looking for so um, we've had some diversity in the 
Um, big white screen, sorry. We've had some diversity in the problems and the projects that have been uh, that have been showcased on this. Oh, here we go. We have Innovator Program itself. Uh, <laughs> we have the we have the Google Innovator Program with us right now. Is that Andy? Hello, Andy. I'm guessing it's Andy. <laughs> Andy is still the man behind the light bulb. Um, but great to have you guys here. So, hey? Of course it's me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard an coming? echo from the, from the Innovator Program. Who else would be coming in as light bulb? It's Andy. <laughs> 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 Just make it clear. <laughs> And awesome to have you. So we're just wrapping up our, uh, our session, actually showing people where they can find uh, the different projects and, uh, and all of these things. But before I carry on with that, do you want to tell us who you are and what you're doing here, Andy? Yes, certainly. So hi, everybody. My name's Andy Caffrey. Uh, I'm a Google Certified Trainer and Certified Innovator myself. And I also work as part of the team that deliver the Certified Innovator Program. So I'm part of the delivery team for Innovator. Woohoo! Uh, so we've got the real VIPs in the house. Uh, so yeah, like we were saying, you can have a look um, from our resource site. We've linked out to the project directory where you can see uh, innovative projects that Google is uh, showcasing and really look at the, the diversity. So just in your ideas that you've brought this afternoon, there are so many incredible ideas that you have and so many incredible problems that, you've, uh, that are really close to your heart. So definitely go and take a look um, at that. And uh, also, somewhere in that list, if you scroll long enough, you'll find uh, Purple ZA. So we're really proud that uh, even though it's our, it's our old logo, which has now been iterated on, we have to fix that. Um, we are also featured on, uh, on the Transformation Center. And uh, all of your info to find, um, to go through the application process is uh, on the Certified Innovator site, which we linked from uh, from our little resource site as well as the uh, the rubric. So uh, when the 2021 applications open, maybe we have some insights into my when that might be. But when they open, you guys can go ahead and have a look through that and uh, um, and prepare your your applications with that in mind. Um, from our side, really important that you're showing. Uh, your passion. I think we've made that clear around your problem um, and that you your problem is really something that you're passionate about. Uh, we want to definitely know that you uh, that you have an online presence, right? That you uh, are sharing, that you're involved, that you're putting things out there, um, that you have a PLN, that you're not uh, just doing what you're doing in your classroom, but that you already have a, a, a connection with other um with other innovative thinkers and that you are um, contributing things, right? That you're already doing things. I think it's really important that you show um, that even if it's, you know, in your school, that you're bringing um, innovative solutions to problems that you have um, demonstrated that you're already able to, uh, to affect change. Right, because what you're looking at with your innovative project is is really just an upscaling um, of a, of a solution to a problem that is potentially a bit bigger than ones you might have addressed in the past. But Google really wants to know that you have a history of transformation, that you are somebody that can make change happen, and that that's what uh, that's something that makes you credible. Um, because as you've as you've seen and as you've heard from everyone that's popped in, um, you're really being put amongst the best of the best in terms of uh, innovative educators and and solution solution creators, um, and obviously that you are already innovating, um, that this is part of who you are, that at your at your core that you are an innovator. Um, and we started off this afternoon kind of thinking about what does innovation mean. Uh, my favorite definition of innovation is uh, innovation is change that unlocks new value. Um, that's Jamie Notter's definition, but I love it because it's around what is the new value that you can bring to this uh, to this problem uh, in your community and even in the world of education um, and how how does your passion for finding a solution to that problem really trans uh, really translate? So uh, as you kind of get through uh, your application process, like um, Irene and I said, we're really here to support you. Um, we're happy to 
to kind of answer questions uh, and and work more on those how might we's and and help you kind of think through the the nitty gritties. Uh, Paul shared around how difficult that was to to kind of consolidate and and get ready for for the application. And we 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 were mm. that we had help, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we definitely are here to support you. So you know how to find us and and all of the innovators that were in the chat earlier. They all dropped in their Twitter handles. Um, so just definitely reach out. Yeah. So to sum up again, this is the the kind of the as easy as one, two, three call. Um, <laughs> you have to have your level two. If mm. you haven't done that yet, it's a formality. Uh, uh, Busi Joe, I see you, and I know that we need to do some <laughs> some exams this coming week, right? Um, and you need to really think about your problem mm -hmm. and not so much about the solution and then talk to as many people really understand your users so by the time you've got that how much we uh sentence and and problem that you you do it from the user perspective and not from your own uh then the written application the links are in the resource site as you know uh a tip i think is if you rather do it in, in a Google Doc or on a text page somewhere, give it to someone to read, to check, you know, do it a hundred times because there's a word limit, so you'll have to work and rework. And once it's really correct, you can just copy and paste it into the actual application. Um, also, just a pointer with the level two exam, just make sure that the, the, um, the address, the email address that you're using for that exam and the one that you're applying to for the Innovator Academy is the same. And then working on your amazing video to show in 90 seconds your, your awesomeness. And the pointers are there on our resource site, so you can have a look at those. But of course, you, you uh, I'm sure, have uh, much better ideas and, and ways to show that. If you look at the video uh, tab there, I did post some or highlight some Innovator uh, application videos um, that I thought they each captured something different. This was just from our group, um, Lens. It's in the video tab. So the first one was Mike, which uh, we don't have to look at them, but you can go and dip into them later. Who well, I thought well, he just showed a real quirkiness, right? Which is like the googliness we were talking about. Scott Hayden, which who is so sincere and lovely, there was like no fanciness in this video at all. But you could feel the passion of what he really uh, wanted to change and how you know it was just the sincerity and the heartfelt uh, problem that he had there. It's really great. Erica um, is a vibey and great things, but uh, look particularly at just cleverly how she did photography. The black background was just clever. And then Jen, who also exhibited some googliness there. I also linked the Certified Innovators YouTube channel there. You can go to the Innovator applications and have a look at um, application videos from around the world to, to get inspired um, to do this. Um, yeah, and then please, like Lindsay said, reach out to us. Let us read through your point of view statements, your how might we statements. Let's work it and rework it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always better to try and talk through it with somebody. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that afternoon under the trees, Lindsay, that you and yeah. I sat and thrashed this out, we yeah. wouldn't be doing this either. <laughs> Exactly. And then I think uh, I'm very happy to answer any questions if anyone else has questions and we can uh, we can open it to uh, to Paul and Andy if they want to share anything. But I think from our side, um, like we showed you earlier, it really is around that karaoke mindset. It's about finding the song that your heart really wants to sing um, and being brave enough to to get up and, and sing it and put you know, put your heart on an application, put your heart on a video, um, get comfortable with being uncomfortable and uh, and uh, and really step up and step out and and give it a shot. And like Melissa said earlier, you know, many people have applied a number of times, and it's taken um, a lot of learning and a lot of iteration to get in. But I actually think that's almost the best preparation, because like we said, we're on iteration 317 with Purple ZA, and we still have uh, a whole lot of versions and things that we've planned to come uh, in terms of where we're going to take that project. So um, absolutely remember that uh, that karaoke mindset and that. Uh, 
yeah, just that, just that courage and that fun and, and being willing to, to step up and, uh, and kind of step out because that's ultimately what, uh, what innovation is around. It's about ca the courage to show up and to, um, to sing your song with the top of, from the top of your lungs and, and to create change, um, in, in education that we're also so passionate about. So, uh, yeah, from us, that's it, I think. Uh, if anyone has other questions, uh, Claire, Marina, Spussy, Robert, uh, anything we haven't clarified, we will definitely pop the recording of the session um, up on YouTube for you guys so that you can uh, go back and have a look and uh, that hopefully we can help some other people with their, um, with their application and give some insight into the process. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Andy, Paul, any, any uh, final thoughts or comments or ideas? Um, just, just keep on going. There's gonna be a lot of times in the application process where I think, you know, I've, I, I was kind of feeling discouraged, like, oh my gosh, like this is just, it's so much, but I think it's just, you know, you just have, you just have to put yourself out there. And in the end, it's, it's, it's totally worth it. Yeah. And a, a bit, and I would imagine you've said this lots of times, but ultimately it comes down to that problem. And the more you focus on the problem and put that in the application, the better that application will do. Yeah. It, you've got you've got it from from the insides uh, from <laughs> the mouth there. Um, so we, we we played a bit with some how might we statements earlier, Andy, and there were some definite implicit solutions. So we have uh, we've shone a spotlight on those, and we're going to be working on uh, on on falling out of love with our solutions and falling more in love with the problem um, with all of these South African peeps for sure. <laughs> Any questions from anyone um, before you go and have yourselves a wonderful weekend? I know that a couple of you are joining us for Tech for Tinies tomorrow. Um, Lee is presenting, so. Um, we're very keen to to have you there. Third time um, a charm, Robert. Third time a yeah. charm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. And uh, just know that we're here to support you because we think that there should definitely, definitely be more South African innovators. Um, so you know where to find us when uh, when you're ready. Share that doc. We'll uh, we'll gladly suggest edits and and all of that. Um, and of course, those of you who already have access to Purple ZA and are learning with us. You can keep on learning with us. And if you want to do a little deep dive into our project, let us know. We can always give you a guest login for you to have a look around um, so that you can see what, what it was that we created. All righty. <laughs> Long as what's up to you already. She's like, I, I bet you it's a how might we or a or a point of view statement. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's already got her problem statements. <laughs> no, 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 no. I did I did a Google Doc and I'm sharing it with you guys already. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Exactly. Exactly. You're sharing a Google Doc already. We love it. We love Wonderful. it. Have a great weekend, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.